Amigos e amigas. Dear friends, let's start the second working session with the theme reform of global governance institutions. G20's history is intertwined with the shocks suffered by the global economy in the last decades. Opportune actions have avoided the crisis from 2008 for it to result into catastrophic uh, situations. The reforming push was insufficient to correct the access of the deregulation of the markets and uh, uh, apology of the minimum state in that moment. We chose to solve and save banks instead of helping people. The choice was made to help the private sector instead of strengthening the state. It was decided that central economies would be prioritized instead of supporting developing countries. The world started growing again, but the wealth generated did not reach the most needy. It is not a surprise that inequality fosters hatred, extremism and violence, nor that democracy is under threat. Neoliberal globalization has failed. Amongst growing turbulence, the international community seems to be resigned to navigate without a direction through hegemony um, disputes. We are cast away as if we were dragged by a chain that pushes us towards a tragedy. But confrontation is not a fatality. Denying this is to give up our responsibility. Around this table, we have the leaders of the biggest economies and regional blocs on the planet. There is no one in a better position than us to change the course of humanity. This year, the global governance reform has definitively been included in the G20 agenda for the first time. The group went to the UN and passed with the endorsement of another 40 countries, a call to action. But this call is but a quick alarm bell because the emission from the Security Council has been on its own a threat to peace and to international security. The indiscriminated use of veto makes the body Hold, makes the body be held hostage by the five permanent members from Iraq to Ukraine, Bosnia to Gaza. The perception that not all territory deserves to have its integrity respected, nor the same life have the same value. That perception is consolidated. Disastrous interventions have changed the order in Afghanistan and in Libya. Indifference has left Sudan and Haiti made them forgotten. Unilateral sanctions produces suffering and reaches the most vulnerable. The Bretton Woods institutions have imposed barriers to the sustainable development goals that they should actually promote. Recent deadlocks in relation to the Treaty for the Pandemic Pact for the Future and the Cali Biodiversity COP shows that diplomacy has been losing breath to in transitions. We should not have paralyzed debates, nor red lines that we cannot cross. Therefore, Brazil in New York propose the call of a conference to review the UN Charter as per the terms of Article 109. Only 51 of the current 193 UN members took part in its foundation. It is also urgent to review financial policies and rules that affect developing countries in different proportions. The 
foreign debt service of African countries is higher than the resources that they have available to finance their infrastructure, health and education. International tax cooperation is essential to reduce inequalities. Studies commissioned by the G20 financial track, they are rather revealing. A 2% taxation on the assets of the super-rich individuals could actually generate funds in the order of $250 billion per year that could be invested in facing social and environmental challenges of our time. World stability depends on more representative institutions. The plurality of voices works as a push and driver for balance. Future will be multipolar. We need to accept this reality, and by doing so, we pave the way to peace. Building a governance that maximizes opportunities and mitigates the risk of artificial intelligence is key. The answer for the multilateralism crisis is more multilateralism. We do not need to wait for a new world war or economic collapse to promote the transformations that the international order so much needs in 1940. Brazilian poet Carlos Drummond de Andrade wrote a poem called International Conference of Fear that translated a feeling very much prevailing amidst the Second World War. To avoid that the title of this poem once more describes global governance, we cannot leave and let fear of having a conversation to win this dialogue. Thank you very much.